looking for the cheapest and most reliable Madden 21 Ultimate Team coins on the market, IG Vault has got you guys covered. Click the link in the description of the video and use code SPORTS for 6% off your order. What's up everybody, Duke back here from SportsGamers.com. So if you're looking for an easy Madden 21 defense that can lock up the run in the pass and really just shut down any offense, then this is the video for you. Because in this Madden 21 tip, I'm going to break down a super simple defense that locks up any offensive scheme you're going to face, you know, when you're playing online, whether it's weekend league, your franchise, rain games, the MCS, whatever. This video will help you guys out a lot. So we're going to be looking at the big nickel over G. As you guys know, this is a very popular defensive formation that you can find in a lot of playbooks. I like to run out of the Giants. Now I'm going to be running a variation of cover three. I'm going to show you my adjustments to stop the run in the pass. As far as my auto flip and my coaching adjustments, I like to have it on. I like to always have that nickel back strong side of the offensive formation. So if they, for example, have three receivers on one side, I always want the nickel back on that side for lots of reasons. Coverage, run defense, blitzing, all that. Um... What I like to do as far as my zone drops with this defense is I'll put my curl flats on either 20 or 25 and my flats on 5. I'm going to use a certain concept that this is going to be very effective with. Now, like I said, this formation is very effective and one of the reasons why is, you know, you can do a lot with your subs. I like to make sure I use the slot corner package or slot CB package with this uh Really more so when I play man-to-man -man defense, but that is something important to note too. I like to have my best two pass rushers at end, although if they can drop back in coverage, that is preferred because, you know, oftentimes I'll drop them at least one into coverage. Um, you know, so it's good to have a good D-line because you will be rushing, you know, sometimes even two or three defenders from this formation. So if you have a good D-line to get that pressure, that's definitely important. Uh, I always like to use her one of my linebackers so i'm gonna if, if my linebackers are not fast i'm definitely gonna sub safeties in here uh it's just it's just important uh because you need to have speed on this year's game also if you put them in coverage man i'm up that is important uh honestly the charges murray's a pretty good, decent enough linebacker so i'll keep him in with james so we're gonna be looking at this cover three sky this defense is very 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 effective at stopping anything so first of all let's look at the run you can run this against shotgun or under center uh, to stop stretches, dives, inside zones, whatever. And at the same time, have good pass coverage. Now, guys, if you're enjoying my content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on and drop us a like on this video. That does help us out a lot. And if you're looking for more of the best Madden 21 tips, if you want some premium content to help you guys out on defense and offense, check out sportsgamers.com for the best Madden 21 tips and ebooks available. We got some great prices going on right now you don't want to miss out on. So, as far as the adjustments go, um, you know, it's very, very flexible. You can press coverage if you want. You can actually just pinch your entire defense if you wish. That's going to, you know, press the, um, the corners up, and it's also going to pinch the D-line. Now, what I like to do is I like to crash the D-line out, and I like to go ahead and put my user on a blitz angle and kind of stand right here. This is going to allow me to shoot the gap on inside zones, like shotgun runs, also under center runs like dives and stretches. And one of the other things I do like to do a lot is put these ends into coverage. Now, if they're if I think they're running the ball, I'm probably not going to. But honestly, you still can, and you can still blow up the run. So say you want to right, like right here, put them in a vertical hook or a hard flat, whatever. You could do that, and it's still you know you can still shoot in the backfield for the run. I'm just gonna let you guys know that if you think they're running, I generally do not do that. But it's it's still gonna work. So let's look here with stretch. So you guys can see here. Just able to easily get in the backfield to blow that run up. Now, you can click off if you want once you shoot in the gap. Um, or you could let the computer make the tackle if you click off. Or you could just, you know, go for the tackle yourself, conservative or hit stick. But as you guys see, there's just a huge gap that opens up for us to come in. And then, you know, we're able, as you guys can see here, once I get in this gap, um, I'm just, I just basically go after the running back, click off, and the computer is able to make that very easy tackle. All right, now, another thing is... You do want your fastest players in here for you to use her for these purposes. So, like, if we go in the shotgun and they run inside zone, you're going to see the same thing. Another adjustment I want to talk about is the coverage. So, while this will still stop the run great, the coverage is very, very effective. So, as you guys can see here, one of the things I would recommend, though, is base aligning against shotgun. Um, now, if they have cover three beaters, and what do I mean by cover three beater? 
there's certain route combinations that if you just stick in standard cover three are going to drop the outside corners and let the receivers run by them for touchdowns. The way you would counter that is to put the outside corners on, well, really whichever side of the field they have the cover three beater going to in a deep half. So let's say that they had a cover three beater going to the right side of the screen. I would need to go ahead and put my corner on the right side of the screen and then deep half. And deep half is to the right on the right analog stick, and that's going to stop the cover three beater. Again, basically you just want to use yourself on a blitz angle, put yourself up in the box, um, kind of like right over the center a few yards back. So I will be going over the adjustments you can make with your DNs and coverage in a second. Just wanted to show how this is able to blow up inside zone as well. Again, you're kind of just sitting back here. You can go in the backfield with your user and make the tackle. Even if you don't make the tackle yourself, which is very easy to do, this is just a really good run defense in general this year. So now that you see how you can easily stop the run, now let's kind of look at some more adjustments you can do against the pass. So as you guys know, something a lot of people will do is plays that have deep crossing routes or deep corners or you know some sort of deep route attacking the sideline and then some underneath flats. Uh, this is one of the more common plays you'll see this year, honestly, is something like this where you can have like a flat and then you know you'll, they'll, they'll do a little motion slam, maybe a little flat on the other side of an out route. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. And these types of crossing routes are really annoying because if you don't, you know, have someone attacking the flat, you know, you're, or I'm sorry, guarding the flat and also guarding the deep sideline, they're going to have easy, 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 easy reads. So something I like to do to counteract this is go ahead and do a, put, this is why I have my curl flats on 20 or 25 is because they're going to guard the deep crossing routes and then I can put my DNs in hard flats. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to be a two-man rush. The DNs are going to guard the flat for the quick routes. And then the curl flats are going to guard the sidelines for the um, crossers and corners or posts or whatever could be running deeper across the middle. Now, you're only rushing two, which is why you have your user on a blitz angle. The reason for this is, guys, if you don't know, if you only rush two and, and they happen to run the ball, the game is going to basically give you a penalty and it's going to be a lot easier for them to run the ball. But because we put our user on a blitz angle, the game thinks even though we're, we're obviously they pass the ball, we're not blitzing with our user, we're playing in coverage, the game thinks we're still rushing three, so there won't be any penalty, if that makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys this. this. Again, it's just something simple, the deep cross or a slant, some, some flats and a streak, right? Very common route combo, as you guys can see. There is nothing open. And eventually we get a coverage sack. Now you guys, look, you know, my 2D tackles on the Chargers... They're nothing special. Obviously, Bosa, he's a great pass rusher, but he's actually at the end in this video. Um, but these two pass rushers I got at D-Tackle and the Chargers, they're, they're not that great. However, <laughs> you know, they. this is the thing about this year's game, guys, is you can rush two or three players, and you, you're going to get sheds. It's just the way the game is. It really is kind of stupid, to be quite honest with you, but it is effective. It works, and that's why you see a lot of people do it. So you guys can see here, if you look at the coverage, there is nothing open because I have both flats guarded. Look, the quick out's taken away as well as the running back. I guard the slant. The other hook zone takes away the tight end. And then this guy right here and this guy are going to converge on the deep crosser if they throw it. And I'm, again, I'm just taking away the slant. So my responsibility in this defense is the middle of the field. Now, like I said, you can rush two this year and get pressure. It is kind of stupid, but you know it definitely works. With that said, you don't have to rush two. Um, you could easily just go ahead and, you know, maybe they're not attacking both flats. Maybe they're only attacking the flat on one side. Uh, you could just go ahead and rush three, just like this. And then, you know, you could uh, also rush four if you want. But, you know, I either rush two, three, or four. Most commonly, I probably rush two or three, to be honest with you, in this defense because the flats definitely are something that need to be guarded this year. As you guys can see here, there, again, there's really nothing open, and we get a little bit of a shed for the sack. Uh, this defense is really effective against multiple offensive formations. It can be against, as you guys can see, it's good against the run under center. Like we saw the iPhone close. It's good against shotgun. It's good against trips. It's good against bunch. Uh, let's actually show uh, some, some trips tied in passing here. It's good against really anything. So this is another pretty popular play, the double and sail. People like to use this because you can hit just very simple route combos over the middle of the field. Uh, you can do stuff like having a, a slant attack with the... The, uh, you know, the corner and the flat, then you have like just an in route coming back over the middle. And th then, you know, if people have their routes, uh, chemistries, like their tight end apprentice or hot route master, they can put the tight end on a post. We don't have that in this video, but there's definitely a lot you can do. Again, 
you can make very simple adjustments with this defense. One thing I like to do if they're hitting the flat a lot with the running back out of this formation is I'll actually put the, the linebacker on a flat, hard flat to the right, and then I'll drop this linebacker right here, the DN, in a hook zone, and then I'll just play the middle of myself and rush three. So you guys have to realize, um, not often in trips tied in do people attack the flat with you know anything opposite the running back. Maybe they'll have a slant coming over in the middle of the field. You can guard that yourself. Maybe they will put one of the outside receivers on a flat or an out on the trips receiver side. But that stuff is just not as common. But as you guys can see here, you know, we're going to put our user on a blitz angle every time, even if we're rushing three or four. And that's because it makes it easier to shoot the gap if they do run the ball. And also, even if we already have three other players rushing, so we don't need to worry about the penalty, we just get better control of our user. It's more smooth. It's more clean. Our user just moves more better if he's on a blitz angle. That's something that I've kind of spoke on a lot this year. That is definitely, it's definitely a fact. It's, it's not something you guys want to sleep on. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we would take this away. What I'm going to look to do is first I'm going to take away that slant for a split second. Then I'm going to go back to that out, or I'm sorry, that in route. Because I know if I take the slant away initially, it's going to eventually run into my defenders once it crosses the hash on the right. And I also know that this hook zone is going to take away the in route right away, like kind of like right here. And after I play that slant for a split second, I can go drop back on that in route. Now, this is a pretty dangerous throw right here. If someone forces that, maybe they could complete it. Uh, they'd probably have to lowball it. But that's something that by the time they're going to be looking to do that, there is, you guys can see here, getting sacked anyways. Because, like I said, this defense sheds. It is kind of ridiculous this year, but the sheds are real. One more quick example I want to show you is that this is also good against uh, spread formation. So, like, if someone's just doing something simple like running spread and running four verticals, this defense will do a fine job against that. Again, you can do your, you know, basically you can do your double Mabel concept is, is if you have two hard flats and then two curl flats, you're going to have, you know, the deeper sideline and then the flat both guarded. And then the middle of the field when you do something like this is our responsibility, obviously, at that point to take away those types of routes. And again, look, we get quick pressure. And that's why I say even if you're rushing two or three, if you have someone like a Joey Bowles, a, a really good pass rusher, at least one of them. You're going to get pressure with this defense. Again, you might think it's dumb, but you can rush two and three on this year's game and get quick sheds like that all day long. So that's why this defense is so popular. It's kind of one of the meta defenses right now against competitive, within, I would say, the competitive community, the pro player community. So check us out, man, sportsgames.com. Drop us a like if you enjoy the content. Until next time, it's Duke, and I'm out of here.